Oh, hi, you guys. Okay. So let's see. Okay, we are recording this. So, hi, everyone. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to unmute for a second and say hi, we can. If you don't want to, it doesn't matter. Whatever makes you happy. Um, I'm sorry that I started a little late. I did like a workout in my living room. Um, it was hard. <laughs> it was harder than I thought. It took me longer than I wanted it to do. So, Christian, don't, I see the judgment. Okay, so, um, if y'all would just unmute yourselves for a second while we just, like, kind of talk about, like, life. Hello! While we talk about, like, life, and then when we do, like, the thing, we can, like, whatever. So, hi, is everyone's thing working good? How are we doing, friends? Good. Think good. it's working? Is it working? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. 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 Oh, cool, cool. Could you? How are the how's the rest of us? Good. Good. Christian, Heather, Lexi. Surviving. Surviving. That's good. Thriving, right? <laughs> or right. I hope you don't mind me calling it the plague. I think that's funny. I don't <laughs> scare anyone. Um, where's my phone? That's so important to me. Okay. I didn't think. Okay, I'll figure it out. So let's talk about this for a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my phone. I have this really there it is. Cute apparatus thing. And I'm gonna put my phone on it so that you can see me, you can see my screen, and you can see the worksheet. So we're gonna continue to do the worksheet. And I thought it would be easier. It's on the website. I don't know how you want to utilize it or what works best for you, but I didn't want to fill the worksheet out on my computer while sharing it to you. And then you had to fill it out on your, that's a nightmare. I'm not doing that. So um, I hope this works. We're totally going to refine this. If you don't like this, okay, we'll figure, we'll do something different. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to help you. So if this is, not bless you, we'll do whatever makes you happy. Um, so Scoggins is posting the videos on Canvas. Yeah, has he been talking to you guys? Yeah, we had a Zoom meeting earlier. Um, it was really just him answering questions. Um, and we were like, what about SI? And he was like, well, Natalie hasn't reached out to me, but she's been like, that's what he said. But you've been sending it out in like the, um, like the remind. So we knew it was happening, but I don't think he knew. Okay, well, I will email him again because I did email him. Um, but that's fine. I'm sure that they have a lot to do. I know my professors have been like, I can't get a straight answer from any of them because they're all like overwhelmed, which is fair. Um, so I know that y'all's tests are on Canvas. And I think, I don't know how they're going to be monitored or whatever. Um, but I do know that he's probably going to give you, if he doesn't monitor them, he's going to give you a minute per question. And so the challenging bit about this is less of like, so it's, you're like, it's online. I'm just going to Google it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have enough time to Google it. That's like their, that's their compromise there is that, um, they're going to make it short enough where you don't have time. So sometimes you can get away with like, you know, some things and you don't know other things and you have your notes out, but, um. A lot of it's like, and especially with the, like the bones and the muscles, a lot of trends. So if you don't know it, you're going to get really confused. Um, I know that it can be like, it seems kind of silly to have SI and all this jazz in class. And I know that's like all kind of a mess. Um, and so whenever y'all can't come or whatever, I'm going to post it on the YouTube. Has anyone watched that? Yes. Yes. Macy, I recommend it. There are bloopers. I think I'm funny. Doesn't mean you'll think I'm funny. <laughs> But, um, and then I'm posting like a, uh, cause I don't want to do my other work. I'm posting like a study with me video. Has anyone ever seen those? So I just record myself studying and I like talk to you every once in a while. Um, and it's more of like, it helps me. I watch other people do it and I put them on my screen because it motivates me to study because otherwise it feels like the weekend all the time with this online crap. Um, so I find that those videos help me motivate me. So I'm like, I'm studying and I'm getting bored and whatever. And then there's someone I'm watching someone study. So you don't have to watch it. I just thought it was fun. Um, I'm going to put it up there. I'm going to show you a couple apps I use for studying just because I know that concentrating and stuff like that can be really challenging. Um, while I go get my phone, 
I have to write down, you remember when you signed in, I still have to do all that. <laughs> Whatever. If you'll, so at the bottom, uh, I don't know how good you are at Zoom. If you're not, it's chill. I'm going to tell you anyway. If you'll go and you, you can click on everyone. So if you just click on my name and you send me your UIN, because I have to write it down and put it in a website, but then no one else sees it. So I just see it. If you'll just send those to me while I go grab. Oh. Welcome, humans. Oh. Wait, what? I'm confused. I don't know how to do what she just told us to do. Yeah, I don't either. Um, she said, hey, there's on a her dog name. behind me, but it's at the bottom and there's chat. And then you go over and you should be able to like click on the name and go down to Natalie Walker. Mm. Did, did we find it? And then we're just sending her what? Send me your UID. UID. Mm, um, I don't know if I should like write these down now. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is all such a mess. Are they gonna do pass fail for anatomy, or have they not decided on that? I have no idea. Honestly, if I let, if I know, I will let you guys know. That would be amazing. I have no idea. They haven't like told me almost anything. I don't think they know. But they finally announced that there's no more school. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything's online. Like, we're not going to go back at all. Yeah, there's the president sent out an email this morning and said, like, it used to be TBD to, like, April 10th, and now it's like, we're done. Which is super sad. Because, like, I graduate, so that blows for me. But um, are y'all at home? Are y'all here? What are y'all? Home. Huh? Christian, I know you're here. I know I'm. I'm at home. Okay, cool, cool. Is everyone happy to be home? Is everyone healthy and good? Does anyone have the virus? It's okay if you do. I'm not gonna. You're through the screen. I can't see. All right, so I'm just writing down these things. All right, so are y'all okay if we do the worksheet? Yes. No. Oh, let me show you this thing. Hold up. Uh, at the bottom of your thing where it's like stop, start, mute, whatever, there's little reactions and there's like a clap, right? It's like a clap back almost. And then there's a thumbs up because if you want to mute yourself and I ask you a question, I would appreciate if you like give me a reaction because then you don't have to unmute yourself and say anything, but it's like a, yes, I have, or you know what I'm saying? Or you can just put like a, a Y or a yes in, or a Y or an, and in the chat, just like kind of to give me some feedback because I know that like muting and unmuting and everyone, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a nightmare. Christian, you and I have like the same ID. That yeah. Is, yeah, that's really interesting. That's weird. I think so too. Okay, let me plug my phone in. <laughs> Let's see how this works. Um, also, just because there's like seven of us, feel free to... Um, just like stop me and ask questions or whatever. Did he put up new videos today or is it just that bone marking whatever that he did the other day? He did a joints video. Oh, is that today? Did he do that today? I don't remember. Okay, no worries. There's that one and then there's like the like the different breaks of bones. I can do that. Oh, what I do? Okay. Tell me, I'm plugging my phone in. Mm. Okay, so let us, let me figure this out really quick. This is all my life. Don't look at all my tabs. I know it's kind of a nightmare. It's just because there's a lot going on. <laughs> okay, it's supposed to show you my phone. There it is. Can y'all see my phone? Yeah. And you can yeah. see my screen. I just kind of want you to see this. This is so irritating. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, okay. Did I make it like more of my screen? It was just because. Okay, here we go. Did I make it bigger? You are the worst. My connection is unstable. Okay, well, let's try this. Is this okay for now? 
Okay. Call her if it's not. Okay. I do have like a, oh, you can't see me. That's right. I have like this big thing that I made. It's like, uh, I don't remember if I went through the notes and rewrote everything or if I just rewrote everything I thought was important. It's a huge packet, it's handwritten. I'm gonna put it on the website um, so that you can look at it. And if you want to, just because we're kind of starting this material, if you wanna look at this like study guide almost as we go on, it will probably help you like refine and see what's important and what's not important. Um, the YouTube has a bunch of like playlists and there's a, so all the videos that would have been on the uh, website are now in that playlist just so the thing's not that slow. Okay, so let's see. So I want to, we can just, I could just kind of talk through it. If you want to unmute yourself and say stuff, that's chill too. I don't know exactly how you want to do it. Okay, so osseous tissue is also known as what? Christian. You muted yourself. Oh my gosh. Macy, what's osseous tissue known as? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> bone tissue? Yeah, this is just means bone. Okay. I wonder if I should like all right, let's do that. Let's do both just in case it like hurts. All right, so what are the some of the functions of bone? Structure. Structure, um, they do, they do give structure. What else? Uh, blood formation. Yeah, they do. What's that called, y'all? Do you remember? Topoiesis. Yeah. Okay, so blood cell formation. Okay, so that's the hematopoiesis that Christian said. That hemat means blood and poiesis means creation or generation. So it's just where we make our blood. Um, so just like in this picture, because I can zoom, right? So the, in the heads of your long bones, right? This is your femur, the heads of your long bones. This is where we make our blood, um, right? In your bone marrow, okay? So there is that medullary cavity that has that yellow marrow, that's fatty. Um, but this is where we make our blood cells, which is why it's really important when you break a bone um, that we heal that so we can continue to make blood. All right, what are some other functions of it? Attachment site for muscles. Yes, that is not, well, yeah, yeah, we can use that as movement, okay, right? So we'll, if we don't have muscle or if we don't have bones to attach, our muscles, then there's no purpose in the muscle, right? The bone and the muscle go together. Um, if we don't have one, we can't do the thing. We, we can't do it with e without either one, right? So we need muscles for bones and we need bones for muscles. Okay, what else? What's that yellow bone marrow do? What's, why do we care about it? Why would we want this here? Why would we want this yellow bone marrow here? What did I say it was made of? It's made of fat. What is fat usually used as? Energy. Energy, right? So this is a storage. So it, it's mineral and growth fat storage. So, sorry because you'll have them in the lab. Did you look at trabecula in lab before you, before the plague? You know what that is? No, it's cool. Write it down and I will, um, I will show you what it is because I can do that. Go away, please. Thank you. Y'all can see this, right? Mm. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so these are trabecula, right, in here. All this little webbing, okay? It looks like this. This is literally a picture. I'm sorry, Macy. This is literally a picture of what? Of this. These are the same. 
right? So this is the head of a long bone. This is the humerus, right? This is your shoulder blade and this is the head of your humerus. So these trabecula are hollow, right? So they end up having, some of them have blood in them and some of them, and your bones end up being pretty hollow um, before you put anything in them. So as the human body, we would like to maximize everything we're doing, right? So because of that, that's why we store like minerals and fat in there for energy so that if we need it later, we have it, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Let's see. I really am trying to like not just me see that. You know. I can't even see what you're looking at. You can't? Can any no. of you? Can you see this web page? No. No, no, no web page. Your paper. That is funny. Okay, 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 okay. Can I share it at the same time? This is hilarious. I freaking hate this thing. All right, now can you see my screen? Yes. Now you see the web page? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So this is the same thing as the picture on your um on your worksheet, right? These trabecula, they look like hold on, my computer is mad. It's like you're doing way too many things at once. So it looks like this, okay? So this is what it where'd it go? Why is it so easy? So this is the head of your um, humerus, and then this is your shoulder blade, and so this is where that red blood cell is stored in these trabecula. Okay, so go back to the gosh. I promise we will like refine this. Okay, so we want to have that fat storage because um, we would rather do something with that hollow space anyway. So. The reason that birds can fly other than like their uh, bones and or their uh, wings and whatnot is because their bones are hollow. So because their bones are hollow, um, it allows them to fly because they're lighter. Okay, so all right, so we have hematopoiesis, right? We create blood cells, we have movement, we have mineral and fat storage. What else? What else do bones do? Protection. Yeah, they protect. And one other thing, what do they do to the muscles? Support? Yeah, for sure, they support. Um, so as you can see, hematopoiesis and blood cell formation go together. So this is right here. All right, so hematopoiesis, we said, is the creation of blood cells. I wish I could make this bigger. Okay, um, so then we talked about, so what is a fat also called? What's another name for a fat? Triglyceride. Yeah, for sure. So we, we put triglyceride storage. And then what, uh, so the bones make Blood, they also make something else. What else? It's something you probably wouldn't think of. It has to do with breaking down and building up bones. How do we signal the body to do things? Hormones? Yeah, so they produce hormones. Right, so does anyone know what osteocalcin does? Any guesses? So osteocalcin helps regulate insulin. I'll move it in a second. Helps regulate insulin secretion. Glucose levels. And metabolism. How are we doing? Are we okay? Are we dying? 
I'm gonna have to work something out for next time. I feel like this is not my favorite pen. Okay, so then, um, how many bones are there in the adult human? Two hundred. Two hundred. I'm curious. It's like I don't know. Two hundred. I, I was going to say that. Um, I think babies have like three hundred and something because they have all these bones that are still cartilage, right? Like when you when a baby comes out and its head's real soft and kind of like funky shaped. Um, it's still cartilage, and it hasn't fused together, right, to form those sutures that you see on the skulls. So your babies have lots more bones than you, which is cool. Which is why if they fall down the stairs, because they're made of a lot of cartilage, they're kind of indestructible. Like Jack Jack. Okay, so the axial skeleton is what? Which bones? Which part of you? Thank you. Skull, awesome. spine, and line, right? Like your right. So this is spine. your spine, also known as your let's put spine, right? Your skull, your rib cage, rib cage, right? This is your long axis. This is an R. I'm very excited about that your rib cage, your long axis, right? So axial is like this. Can you see me? Can all of you see me? I just don't know what you can see. You can see me? Okay, your axial skeleton is here. Okay, so then what's your appendicular skeleton? Your limbs. Yeah, your limbs and your girdles, it says. Someone wanna give me an example of what I think a girdle is? Like your hips? Yeah, like your hips and your shoulders. Good call. I just was wondering if y'all knew that. All right. So almost like your vital stuff is your axial, and then you're kind of like, I mean, your arms are vital, right? But like, you know what I'm saying? Right, so vital, right? And then your limbs are kind of like accessory. Okay, so we have kinds of shapes of bones. The What is the shape of bone that they are longer than they are wide? What are those bones? Long bones? Yeah, long, yeah, yeah, not a trick question. Long bones, okay. and our long bones usually make up which kind of, which part, part of our body? Our limbs. Yeah, girl. Right, your limb bones are your long bones. Is that better? Okay. They're longer than they are wide, right? And they make up your hands and your le or your feet. And nope, your arms and your legs. Your arms and your legs. All right, and then we have another bone that use is usually in our wrists and our ankles. What kind of bone shape would you say those are? They're called short bones, right? Yeah, for sure. They're short bones. What shape are they usually? They're like cubes. Yeah, for sure, they're cubes. They're cube-shaped bones. Okay, and then, let's see. This is not supposed to be here. It is. Oh, you know what I do have instead of doing that? Ready for this? Ooh, never existed. Okay, it's fine. It made me feel so much better. <laughs> okay, so then we have another kind of bone that is kind of weird. An example of this is your patella. What kind of bones are the weird bones? What are they called? Irregular. They're called um. What did I miss this up? They're called sesamoid bones. Yes. Christian, we're going to talk about irregular bones later. So the sesamoid bones, like your patella vary in size and they vary in number and they form within tendons. Like if, uh, if you've ever seen like a cadaver or anything like that, your patella is like nestled in your, um, your patellar tendon. So it's like, like femur, 
and then tibia, and then if this is your patella, there's like a little, there's a tendon that goes over it, and it's like nestled in there, um, embedded in there, and it arises from that. That's why they're kind of funky shaped. Can I go to the next page? Are you chilling? So we don't have to do all of this packet. I will record and do it all so that if you don't want to chill for however long it takes me to do this packet, it will be on the YouTube. Okay, so they vary in size and number and they're within tendons. Oh, see, that's my, that was what happened is I put it in there twice. So just ignore this part. I'm sorry, I did the typos. All right, so then these bones, Christian, are, oh no, not yet. All right, so bones that are thin, flat, and curved are what kind of bones? What kind of bones? They are usually the scapula or your ribs. Flat bones? Yeah, these are flat bones. Okay. They form your sternum, your scapula, your ribs, and what other, what, what's the last one? Kind of weird. It's not necessarily flat, but it is in the way that it is um, structured. Your skull? Yeah, for sure, your skull, right? Because if you've ever seen those, they're, I mean, it's rounded because your skull is a sphere, right? But they're flat, right? If you were to flatten those out, they would be flat, right? They're not really dense. They're not big structurally, okay? All right, and then our last shape is complicated shapes, right? These are your hip bones and something else. What are they? Irregular. Right. Irregular. Okay, they're complicated. So they're hip bones, and what other bones are your irregular? Um, vertebrae? Yeah. Okay, so then, let's see, one second. Okay, so we have, those are our shapes of our bones. I'm just gonna kind of make these as we go along so that I can put them on there later so we can concise these. Things I think they would ask, they like to ask about um, hematopoiesis and where it occurs. It occurs in the heads of the long bones. They like to ask about the skull being an irregular or a flat bone. And then they like to ask about the weird things. So that's what I would say to focus on for that. Um, all right, so bone structure. Bones are called, where is it? Yeah, okay, so bones are, how would you classify a bone? Like, what part of the body would you say it is? Like, is it a tissue? Is it a cell? Is it an organ system? What would you say it is? Organ? Yeah, so bones are actually organs, right? Because they're made of lots of, di of, lots of tissues that do the same function, right? An organ's definition is several tissues that come together to form similar functions, okay? Right, because they contain different types of what? What did you say? Organs contain different types of what? Um, tissues? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, whoever didn't tell me last time, what is bone tissue also called? Osseous. Say it again, Christian. O osseous, however you pronounce osseous it. Osseous tissue, for sure. Osseous tissue, okay. Right, so your bones are comprised of all these different kinds of things, which is why we consider them an organ, because all of these things end up doing a very similar function in the bone. Right, but it's comprised of lots of different kinds of tissue. Right, these are all your kinds of tissue. Okay, all right, so then we have levels of structure. So if we're looking at a bone, there's like different ways we would say we're looking at it. What's your largest one called?
Anyone want to guess what your smallest is? So if I'm looking at a bone on the table, bare bones, uh -huh, what, what level of structure is that? Starts with a G. Growth? Yeah, so how I like to remember this is, um, sorry, Macy, I keep calling you out, but I know that like you're kind of squeamish about these things. All right, this is irritating. People stop texting me, right? If I was to plop like a, like a fresh bone, right, a freshly cut bone out, out in front of Macy, Macy would think that was gross. Look at her face. She's like not happy, right? She would think that is gross because it's big and we see all the tendons and everything like that. So she would think that is gross because it's big and it's nasty, okay? And then under it, if I was to put it under a microscope, right, it would be less gross, right? Because you're not really sure what we're looking at. Okay, and we'll, you know, I'm sure you'll learn, but you're not really sure what you're looking at. You can kind of detach from the bone. So it's really gross when it's up and big and fresh out of the, fresh out of the human, right? And then when we put it under a microscope, right, or microscopic, right? And then your smallest is your chemical level. Okay, so we can look at the bone from a gross perspective, from a microscopic perspective, and from a chemical perspective. We can look about how it attaches to other things, how it moves, right? We can look at the different kinds of cells and then we can look at the different kinds of salts or chemicals or mineral minerals that make up that bone. Does that make sense? From largest to smallest, blue chilling? Cool. Okay, so then your gross anatomy, which is also what? Define gross anatomy for me. You mean like the anatomy of like the bone as a whole? Right, yeah. For sure. I just wanted you to restate, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're just talking about it. Right? So your gross, gross anatomy, right? We have two kinds of bone in your gross anatomy. The one that's the dense outer layer is what layer? That outside piece of bone you see, what does it look like? Compact? Yeah, this is compact bone. Okay. It looks pretty smooth, right? You could run your fingers along it, right? It's pretty smooth, right? It's your dense outer layer. What is its function if it's dense and it's like on the outside? What does a hard covering do to anything? Protect. Yeah, it protects it, right? Right, this protects the bone because we've learned that on the inside of the bone, there's lots of different pieces like, like yellow marrow and nerves and um, we're making uh, blood cells, so it's protecting all the stuff inside, right? It looks smooth and solid, okay? And then your other type of bone is what? Spongy. Yeah, your spongy bone. I'm going to flip it. Is that true? Oh, there's no back. Uh-huh. Okay. So before we kind of talk about it, so this is a flat bone, right? It's your skull. So you see this nice, like, flat layer. It looks really pretty, right? This is your compact bone. It's the outside of the bone. And then within it is that spongy bone, right, that does all those functions that we talked about, right? But so we see when we're looking on the outside of the skull, it looks pretty and pristine and smooth. So that's going to be your compact bone, right? Okay, so then your, let's see. All right, so you're, this is we're talking about spongy bone. Okay, so your spongy bone is a honeycomb of small needle-like flat pieces, which are called what? What is that? What was the picture I showed y'all earlier that looks like tunnels? What's it called? Trabeculi? Yeah, trabecula or trabeculi or however, whatever makes you happy. Right, trabecula. Okay, those are those little, that's what they like to say, honeycombs, right? It's like a tunnel. Okay, and that's within your, within your spongy bone, right? You see all these little tunnels? That's what we're talking about. Okay, so the open spaces between them, um, oh, so the open spaces, I, this is a repeat, open spaces between the trabecula are filled with yellow or red what? Marrow? Yeah, bone marrow. Okay. 
So does that make sense what I just said? It's just like, so we have compact bone and then we have spongy bone under it, okay? And in the spongy bone, we have all these like tunnels and in the tunnels, it's filled like the river or whatever is red or yellow marrow, right? Which does the fat storage or the blood formation or produces hormones or anything like that. Does that make sense? In the trabecula, they're the tunnels, right? Right, the, the trabecula are the, um, Oh, the trabecula are the, yeah, these. Not necessarily the tunnels, but these little pieces that make up the tunnels, right? It almost looks like you're weaving stuff together, and those little projections, right, the honeycomb pieces, those are the trabecula. Okay, thank you. They make up tunnels, yeah. It's kind of like hard to differentiate them, for sure. Okay, so let's see. So the structure of short, flat, and irregular bones. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to This, so these, the structure of short, regular, and flat bones, these thin plates have a spongy bone called, so this plate is called a, let's say, I call it a di dipole, but I know it's not. There's like an umlaut and everything. So this little piece is what we're talking about. It's, um, it's plates of spongy bone that are sandwiched by compact bone, right? So sometimes like in your long bone, you don't have these just because it's a bigger structure right? It almost is like, um, like the difference between a plate, like I would say a plate is like a, has a dipole because it's like compact, compact, all the stuff in between, right? But your long bones is kind of like a cup, right? Where we have compact bone around the outside, but whatever you put in it, right? It's not so sandwiched between. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. I can show you all a picture of that later. It's like, Okay, so then compact bone sandwiched between connective tissue membranes, right, which is what this is, right? It has a periosteum and an endosteum. Does anyone remember what peri means? Uh, outside. Right, so periosteum, so this is outside of the compact bone. Right, so if you can remember what peri means, you know what we're talking about. Right, you don't necessarily have to know what's going on, right? But peri tells you where. What does endo mean? Inside. Yeah, so this is inside compact bone. And I'll show you a picture. So actually, I have one here, I guess. So. So this is your little sandwich dipole thingy, okay? So your periosteum, right, is right here because it's the outside of the compact bone. So this is like your periosteum, right? It's part of your compact bone, right? But then your endosteum would be like in here, right? It's not necessarily the spongy bone yet, but it's on the inside. It's almost like, it's almost like the basal and apical layer, y'all remember? So I would say the periosteum is your apical layer and then your perios or your endosteum is like the basal layer of your compact bone. Does that make sense? Like it's top and bottom. It's almost like the tape or whatever, like if you're looking at both sides of it. Um, there are some really good, I think the videos in the playlist on YouTube are really good because they show you a lot of visuals and I feel like bone is really visual. You need to see what we're talking about and you can see it just because we have a lot of specimens. Um, so I would go watch those at least for the visuals. Okay, so for these, short, irregular, and flat bones, we have no definitive marrow cavity, so we don't have anywhere to put those, well, we don't have anywhere to put that marrow. Why is it asking me about humans? I'm adding another human. Welcome, human. Okay, so, so there's no definitive marrow cavity, right? The marrow is scattered through where? Where do we, where do we say marrow is scattered through? Spongy. Yeah, the spongy bone, which is where the what are. That weird stuff is. Trabecula? Right. So in the, I'm going to move the piece of paper really close. So in this long bone, right, we have trabecula up here, you see, but this has a definitive cavity for marrow. Like these pieces, this portion is where the marrow will be, right? It's specifically for that. However, the heads of long bones, right, have all your trabecula in it, whereas your flat bones, they have no marrow cavity, so they only have this trabecula piece, which is where all that stuff lies. So they don't have anywhere specifically for it. Does that make sense? 
can we just find it? Find it. Okay, so what kind of cartilage covers the bones where movable joints are? What kind of cartilage covers the areas where movable joints are, right? Like where like your elbow or where your bones touch. Do we remember our kinds of cartilage? No. Okay. Huh? Say it again. Yeah, it is. So hyaline cartilage, right? It covers the areas that touch. So, right, so maybe the ends of, right, so the ends of this bone, right, the end of my humerus, and then my olecranon. Have you all learned that? How are they doing lab? Um, I'm still confused. Cool. Yeah, I don't okay. know. So do you know what the olecranon know. is? Your elbow? Yeah, so, yeah, so this is my olecranon, right? It's part of uh, one of my forearm bones, okay? And then it touches this humerus part. And so where these connect, right, there's hyaline cartilage lining it. So I'm, stop telling me my internet is unstable. It's so rude. Okay, so, right, it's articular cartilage, but it's, you know what I'm saying? So ignore the fact that it says articular cartilage because we'll talk about why it's articular cartilage later. But see, this is, so this is your femur, right? Your patella would sit right here, okay? So this cartilage is making sure that when it touches the tibia, and the patella, that it doesn't create friction and pain. Does that make sense? Does this little picture make sense, right? So we have cartilage here, right? We have cartilage on the ends of this bone, okay? All right, so then, right, so that's flat, flat bones and irregular bones. So that's important that they have no, they have the endosteum and the periosteum that makes them special. And then um, they don't have a specific marrow cavity. So um, what about long bones? Long bones have, they have shafts, which are called what? Diaphysis. Yes. So the shaft, is it in the middle? Is it the ends? What is it? So if this is my bone, can y'all, y'all can see me, right? If this is my bone and this is an end and this is an end, your diaphysis, right? Your middle piece is this middle portion from here to here, okay? Right, but then your epiphyses are the ends, okay? So then your bone ends are called what? Epiphyses. Yeah, epiphyses. So they're the end pieces, right? The diaphysis is the middle, and then the epiphysis is the end. So they have a they have a middle, they have ends, and then they have something covering the whole bone. What covers things in the body? Oh, it's called a peri something, right? Like yeah, a... but I'm I'm way more general than that. Oh, I don't know. What what is the a line? It's just a membrane. Oh, are you asking? Dang. <laughs> this is, yeah, hold up. So this is, ooh, I'm trying to, Y-S-E-S. -E okay. Sorry. Right, so it has ends, right, which are called epiphysis. It has a middle, which is a diaphysis, and then the whole thing is wrapped in a membrane. You just don't see it because we usually see bones that have been, I don't want to say clean, right, but they've been, like, removed other things so we can see other um, specific pieces. So they have membranes that surround the bone, okay? Right, so the diaphysis forms the axis of a long bone, right, so the middle, and it consists of what kind of bone surrounding the central cavity? On the outside, what's on the outside of the bones? What's the kind of bone on the outside? Compact? Yeah, the compact bone. Compact bone surrounding the central, what is the, what's that inside piece that holds all the stuff called? Spongy? Say it again. You're talking about spongy bone? I'm talking about that middle piece in long bones, because now we're in long bones. Okay, so if we're in long bones, what's that middle piece that holds all the marrows called? Is it the canal? It's close. It's the it's the medullary cavity. Okay. 
Okay. Right, which is filled with yellow marrow in adults. Right, because we want it to store fat um, and things like that so that it, if we needed the energy, we could take it from there. Okay. So that was the diaphysis. So the epiphyses, which are the ends of long bones, contain what bone out on the outside? Not a trick question. On the outside of the bone is what? What kind of bone is it? So what kind of bone is on the inside? Entry. Right. So what's on the outside? Compact. Yeah. Compact. Yeah, girl. Right. So it consists of compact bone externally, right? And what kind of bone internally did we say? Bone G. Yeah. Okay. And so this, right? So because these are long bones, right? Which are going to be here, here, right? And your legs, right? Your limb bones, these are going to have articular cartilage, right? Articular cartilage that covers the joint surface. So let's see. Okay. Right, so our short, flat, irregular bones, right, they have a dipole, they have periosteum, endosteum, and they have hyaline cartilage, right? Whereas our long bones, okay, our long bones have diaphyses, they have epiphyses, right? They have a medullary cavity. They have articular cartilage. Okay. And we'll keep talking about what else they have. Okay, so then they have something called the epiphyseal line, okay, which is between where? Where would you guess? We know we now know three term or two terms for our long bones. So do you think it's maybe between those two things? Yes. So <laughs> sorry. So it's between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. Okay. Right, and this is remnant of the epiphyseal plate. I will explain all of this momentarily. Okay, which is where, do you want to take a stab at what happens at the epiphyseal plate? Is it like a growth plate where they like fuse together as you get older? So, yes, so technically, yes. So, I'll go back to the picture in a second. So, let's see, screen time. Okay, so, the epiphyseal line is once it's fused and we've been, and we're done growing, right? So, diaphysis, right, is the long piece and the epiphysis is the top, right? So, if we have these and there's this epiphyseal plate, Right? We're going to create new cells on either side, which will push it out, almost like the skin. You remember how it pushed up from the basal layer? Right? So we're going to push out from this plate, which will grow the bone in length. Okay? And then as we get older and we stop growing, and our osteo, which, what kind of cells make things? They're called osteoblasts. Yes. Blasts right. build, right? Yeah, perfect. Good job, Abs. Um, so the blasts stop building things, right? And so we start to ossify that, right? Which means it just gets hard and it, and it doesn't grow anymore. And so then it becomes your epiphyseal line. I'm gonna show you a picture of it in a second. Okay. So. Okay. So, let us look at this. So, we have, what's the top of the bone called? The 
Epiphyses. Right, and then the long piece in the middle? Diaphysis. Cool. Awesome sauce. So we see this right here, epiphyseal line. So right here, I have to like look at the thing, right? So we have epiphysis and diaphysis. And so it's right between those, right? And then this will create cells on either side. So they'll push out this way and they'll push out this way, right? Creating more and more of this, right? Which makes the bone longer and longer and longer. So then once it fuses and we're done growing and our bone's cool, it will become the epiphyseal line, right? It was the epiphyseal plate and now it goes to the epiphyseal line, right? Because it no longer has um, capability to grow, right? You're an adult and you are as tall as you are, right? That's why when people get breaks, they take x-rays. Well, they always take, you know what I'm saying? They take x-rays, but then the doctor can tell you whether or not you're going to grow anymore because he's looking at your epiphyseal plate. And he can tell you how much more you have to grow or how ossified your epiphyseal plate is, which I think is kind of cool. Cool? Does that make sense what that is? They like to ask questions about that. That's a big hitter. Does that make sense? Kind of. Cool, cool. All right, so then we talked about the epiphyses, we talked about the diaphyses, and now we're going to talk about membranes. We have two membranes. One of them. Um, we have two membranes. So you want to take a stab? It's the, peri the periosteum and the endiosteum, right? Yeah, for sure. Periosteum. Okay. So your periosteum has two layers. Do we know what they are? <laughs> So it, it has the fibrous layer and the osteogenic layer. Okay, so what would you guess happens at the fibrous layer? What would you guess happens at the osteogenic layer? That we're like, I don't know. Okay, so you, I know y'all can do this, you're, you're chill. So osteo means what? Like bone? Yeah, and genic means? Oh, it makes bone, it right. like makes bone cells? Yeah, so this layer is dividing and creating, and it's, this is the mitotic layer, right? Your fibrous layer isn't gonna be as active. It might be more support or structural, right? Does that kind of make sense just by looking at the names? So if you can look at those things and break them down, then you can be like, oh, I don't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to study that that much because I can tell you what it means by looking at the name. Okay. So then we're going to talk about some of left cycle. Not, still not. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to talk about your periosteum. So this is white. Um, how many layers is it? Take a guess. Two? Yes. Okay, this is double layered. Okay, this is double layered and it covers where? Where does Perry mean? Not Christian. What does Perry mean? And not Abby. One of you other nerds. What does Perry mean? Outside. Yeah, girl. Okay, so this covers your external surfaces then. Right? Except for in joints right? Because the external surface is covered by that articular cartilage because it has to touch other bones and do things like overhead presses and all that fun stuff that we do. And so it has to have a different kind of cartilage. Okay. So then we have our, so then remember our periosteum has two layers. It has the fibrous and the osteogenic layer. Okay. Your fibrous layer is your, so if we're thinking it's for protection, where do we think it is? We think it's inside or outside? Outside? Yeah, so this is an outer layer, okay, which consists of dense, irregular connective tissue. I don't believe you're going to remember this, so I'm going to tell you. So dense, irregular connective tissue withstands tension from lots of different ways. It's almost like um, those parachutes when you were little or a blanket or something. If you all held on to one side and then leaned back, it would resist tension really well from all those different directions which is really important 
because that means from lots of different angles, if that bone gets pulled on the outside, it's protected and it's strong, okay? Um, and so then, all right, so these five, it has these fibers called Sharpay's fibers, right, that secure it to the bone matrix. Okay, this is pretty much just telling you that like it's anchored, right? Right, it's anchored down in that bone matrix by these Sharpay's fibers. Let me see if I can find you. Good, good, good. I don't know if it is it gonna stop the maybe not, maybe not. Maybe I'll show you later. Okay, so then right, so that fibrous layer did what we thought it was gonna do, right? It's protective. It's outer, it's made of dense connective tissue, which withstands tension from lots of different directions, right? And so now we have our osteogenic layer, right? So we think that's inside or outside. So if this is the outer layer. Inside. Is the cool. inner? Yeah, yeah, your inner layer. So I'm gonna show you a picture of that earlier because, or later because we're talking about membranes, so we're still on the very, very outside of the bone, right? Each bone has, or the outside of each bone has two membranes, right? So we have that fibrous layer, which is on the top, right? It does the most strength and it's the most protection. And then inside that is that osteogenic layer, but this is touching the outside of the bone, right? So we're still not even in the bone, right? But we're on the outside of the bone. Does that make sense? I just kind of want you to know where we are. All right, so this contains... Primitive cells, what kind of cells do you think they are? So if they're, so they're osteogenic. They osteo, oh. Yeah, no, 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 they do. They do the same thing, but we call them osteogenic cells. They're osteogenic cells that give rise to bone cells, right? So they're osteogenic, meaning that they create bone cells. Very similar to osteoblasts, right? Okay. They contain nerve fibers and blood vessels, right? Which go into the shaft of the bone. Right, so these, I'll show, I'll show you this stuff too, don't worry. These fibers branch into the nerves and the blood and whatnot. This starts to make up that living portion, right? If it's making cells, it's making that living portion. So let me, let me go back. Sarah and I have a picture of that. Okay. I will find a picture. Hold on. All right. Too many text messages. Okay, let's see. Okay, I can't find a good picture. I'll find, I'll post one later. Okay, so right, the anchoring points for these. Right, so if we're talking, so the anchoring points are tendons and ligaments. Okay. Right, so these, this membrane allows tendons and ligaments to anchor down into these bones so that they stick on their good so that we can use those muscles to move. Okay, so now we're going into the end osteum, right? Okay, just kind of putting those highlights to like differentiate where we are, just because there's a lot going on. All right, so this is a delicate connected tissue membrane that covers the internal bone surface, right? So we're within, that's what endo means, right? And it covers the What's inside? What kind of bone is on the inside? 
spongy? Yeah, sponge. So it, it covers. And what's in spongy bum? Christian. What are the tunnels called? <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, they're called the trabecula. Okay. So this endosteum literally lines those little canals. It lines this trabecula in bones um, so that so that it's okay. Oh, you can't hear. Sorry, Christian. I didn't mean to call you out. The packet is online. I am sorry. I am a big noob. I can't see the chat. Okay, so no worries, Christian. My bad. All right, so it covers the trabecula of the sponge. You want it covers those little canals. Um, and it allows, so it lines, so it lines the canals, I already said that. Okay, it lines the canals that pass through the compact bone. Okay, so these also contain osteogenic cells that differentiate into different kinds of cells, bone cells. All right, so the endosteum does almost the same thing, it protects and it, um, and it has function in the inside of the bone. Okay, so hematopoietic tissue in the bone. Okay, hematopoietic tissue in the bone. So there is two kinds, there's lots of kinds of marrow. So this, we're gonna talk about red marrow first. Right, which is found within the, where is it found? Red marrow. Where's red marrow found? It's in the, <clears throat> it's in the epiphyses. Right, but where, what structure is it found in? That's right, but yes. So it's in the trabecular cavities, right? That picture at the beginning where it looks like it's all spongy, but then it's covered in red because that's where the red marrow is found. So red marrow is found in the trabecular cavities of spongy bone and the that special word, that dip low of flat bones. What is the diplo again? So that diplo or dipole or whatever the dress is, is the little sandwich in flat, short, and irregular bones. Okay, thank you. Right, so the red marrow is found right in there, whereas in your long bones, it's found right here, right? It's still found in the trabecula of both. It's just in a different place in each bone because each bone is structured differently. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so newborns, uh, their medullary cavity. Okay, so in newborns, they have um, their medullary cavity. They all contain red marrow. Right, because we have red and yellow marrow, right? Newborns contain only red marrow. Right? They're pretty chunky. They kind of store their fat other ways, okay? An adult, the red, mo red marrow is located in the heads of the femurs, humerus, and most active, um, these are the most active areas of hematopoiesis, which means what? What does hematopoiesis mean? Can y'all hear me? Mm. What does hematopoiesis mean? Creation of blood cells. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, uh, so let's see. So this sentence is telling you that red marrow is located in the femur, uh, the heads of the femur and the humerus, but it's most active in flat bones in that dipole, right? That's where most of our bone or most of our blood cell formation occurs, okay? 
It also occurs right in your diplo of irregular bones like your hip bones, right? So this sentence, you know everything that the sentence is saying, it's just saying it in a different way, right? It's telling you where the red marrow is located in each kind of bone. I muted myself, I'm sorry. Okay, so then yellow marrow can convert to what? Take a guess. The two kinds of marrow. Yellow marrow can convert to what? Red marrow. Red marrow. If someone becomes, what is it called when you have less red blood cells than you want? Anemic. Yeah, right? Right, so we usually use that um, yellow marrow as storage of fat and whatnot, but if someone is anemic and they don't have enough blood, we can use that yellow marrow to become red so that we can have more blood cells, which is kind of cool. It's like a, we can store this fat, but if we really needed it, we can make it into blood cells. Okay. How are we feeling? Are we dying? Do we have questions? Talk to me. Cool. Okay, so there is a fair amount of this packet left. I know we're like already 15 minutes over. If you don't want to stay, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I am recording the whole thing and I will put it on the YouTube. It's not a big deal. So at any moment, if that makes you, if that makes you happy, do your thing. Okay, so all right, so now we're going to talk about bone markings. Okay, bone markings, right? These are the sites of muscle, ligament, and tendon attachments to the external surface, right? So we need these. So in lab, I really hate the arm in lab. That really makes me crazy. Um, I'm gonna have to show you because it's just like so much better if you like know what I'm talking about. So let's see. I'm gonna share the other thing. So for lab, like, are we, is he going to, like, video the lecture, or, like, yeah. are we going to do the Zoom lecture? I think he's going to, I think he's going to do, like, videos of what you're talking about, or Zoom teach you the bones or whatever, and then. Yeah, at the Zoom meeting earlier, like, we had for class, it was just him answering all of our questions and um he said that for lecture it was like the powerpoint that he'd normally put up on the screen and it's him doing like a voiceover over it mm. and like talking about it and those are the videos that he posted on canvas mm. um but for lab he was like um you don't have to attend the zoom meetings if you don't want to they're really just office hours mm -hmm. okay i was wondering that yeah so like um quizzes and practicals and tests are gonna like open up at like 12 so for example, if it was like, if our test was tomorrow, then he would open it up at, uh, at like 12.01 tomorrow and close it at 11.59. That way it's like you do it at your own time. You don't have to do the Zoom meeting. I know a lot of us are working and that's what he said. Does that start next week? Like the quizzes or did that start this week? There's one quiz that's due the 27th. Okay. Um, But for lab, that I'm still confused about. Um, we have, well, I know we have a, I think we have a quiz tomorrow for lab. But again, it's open all day. So I don't know. I would just check Canvas like all the time. You can actually, um, y'all, I did this. You can download. I know I have a Mac, so I can't promise anything for anyone else who doesn't have a Mac. You can download the calendar that they use online on the Canvas, and you can add it to your Google or your your either your Google Calendar or your Mac Calendar. And so now on my watch and on my phone, I can see everything that's going on because now they have to use the online calendar. So um, I did that, and that helped me because I almost missed a couple of things. So I recommend doing that. Um, okay, can you see my web page? Yes. Cool. So these, right? So this is your femur. It's pretty cool looking Ooh, and it scrolls really fast, right? So this sits in your hip bones, right? But the greater trochanter, the neck, all these little grooves and um, all these little grooves on both sides, right? This, these lines, these tuberosities, all these things are sites for ligament and tendon attachment. 
every kind of like structural deviation on a bone serves a purpose. And then we'll learn uh, later, I think it's like on Thursday or whatever, that um, your bones grow and change constantly. So if you're going to the gym all the time, your bones are going to change to support larger muscles and more tension. And like your bones are going to grow different ways. There's a, there's a condition called Oshkod Slaughters. Can you see my knee? So if you have a really raised piece right here, right? Almost like if you've ever done, you know, because the rest of it, because you're not Christian. If you've ever done girl push-ups, right, on your knees and it really hurts, right, in the, like, the middle of your tibia, you might have Oshkod Slaughters, which is just the tendon that attaches to your um, patella it might be really tight. And so it pulls that bone right here. So it pulls on your tibia. And because it's asking your tibia, that strain asks your tibia to um, create more bone. And then it creates like this little, it's not like a huge little hill, right? But it's like a little hill and it alleviates that tension because it doesn't have to pull down so far. It can come up a little bit. So your bones are constantly changing these markings and um, deviations and grooves and whatever so that certain things can go on. Um, like in your skull, you'll see there's like these little, there's like these little holes in the very back of your, um, your eye sockets. And that's for your like optical nerve. So literally because your eyeball sits in there, it has this little hole so that your optical nerve can sit right through there, which is like cool that your bones like all, they it all just like fits really perfectly. I'm a big nerd. It's fine. Can, so let's go back to the thing. I know I'm like switching around a lot. I'll, I'll figure it out before next session, I swear. Okay, so bone markings, right? Side of tendon, ligament, and muscle attachments, right? So the areas involved, what are they just? Right, so areas involved in formation, or they're also called conduits, right? For blood vessels and nerves. So these are kind of like, um, like canals or grooves, right? So we said that the, there are nerves and blood vessels that line and sit on the front of bones. So these conduits or these little like grooves um, allow for the passage of those things too. And that's, and it's their kinds of, their kinds of things. So we have, so we have three types of markings. We have a marking that's kind of a bulge. So what would you think that would be called? If it comes out. Projection. Yeah, for sure. So if you had Oshkod slaughters, you would, this would be a projection because it bulges. The increased stress, right, of muscle pull or modifications allows for more. So it comes up, it peaks, almost like that greater trochanter or, um, I'm trying to think of like another good example. All right, so we have projections, we have bowls or grooves or cutouts, right, which, what would we call those, do you think? So if it doesn't go out, it comes in. Is it like an indention? Right. So it's, yeah, it is an indention. So it's called a depression, right? This is passages for nerves um, and vessels, right? Sometimes these depressions, um, if you've ever seen a picture of a fem or of a humerus, right? If you look at the back of the humerus, right, there's a place so that when you straighten your elbow, this elbow piece, right, which is called your electromon, it literally looks like a hook. It sits right there. So there's a depression in the humerus so that when your elbow flexes, the, the electronon sits right there, right? And then it looks flat. It doesn't look weird. It's not like jutting out. You know what I'm saying? It sits right there. But if not, if you feel right up in there, it might be kind of tender because there's nerves right there. There's a big hole right in the bottom of your humerus, which is where it sits, right? So that's a depression. Right, and so then these literal holes are canals, right? So literally a hole like for your um, optical nerve, right? These are called openings, right? These serve for passages of blood vessels and nerves so if they literally have to go through the bone, right? Which is why your vertebrae have that big hole in the middle of it, right? If you're looking at it like this, they have that big hole in the middle. What is the, what goes in the big hole? Like your nerve? Yeah, or like, like your in your spine, right? And you have that big hole. What goes in there? Like your vertebral column? Yeah, so your spinal column. You're literally, your, your spinal column sits in there, right? All those nerves and fibers and all that stuff that allows you to tell your toes to twitch, right? Sit in those holes, okay? 
right? So those are our three types of bone markings, okay? And so then, so this is like, so let's see. So this is gross, right? And now we're going to microscopic, okay? Okay, so there are five specialized cells, right, that we use in bones. Does anyone, we've already heard one of them. Does anyone want to take a guess what it was? They create bone, but it's not an osteoblast. Uh, osteogenic. Yeah, osteogenic. Osteogenic cells, and then we talked about osteoblasts, right? These essentially do similar things, okay? And then tell me some other kinds of cells you know. Osteocytes. Yeah, osteocytes. Christian, what does an osteocyte do? Uh, maintains. Yes. All right. Something else? One more. Osteoclast. Osteoclast. What do osteoclasts do? They eat. Right. So, yeah, these break down. Clast means it breaks down. And then you also have bone lining cells. Right, so that should be, I feel like that is something you've all kind of learned just because you know these endings and so you know what they mean. So you're just putting bone in front of most of them, right? So it's doing the same thing that you know it to do, just it's doing it in your bones. Nice, Christian. I heard all of it. it was like, I did. Yeah. There was stuff on my keyboard. Nice, nice. Way to get it off. Okay, so then osteogenic cells, also known as, so these osteogenic cells can also be called osteoprogenitor cells. I know why there's so many names, I don't know. But, um, so right, so osteogenic cells are those um, archaic stem cells, right, that allow us to form bones, right? So this is just another name for them. Right, so they mitotically activate stem cells right in your periosteum and endosteum. Oh, there's no you. Periosteum and endosteum. Right, so they're. I'll, I'll just finish the section and then I'll talk about it. So they are activated when they're stimulated, right? Maybe that's. Um, maybe that's I sit on the couch all day and I need to grow some new cells on my hip bones to support all of me sitting on the couch, okay? Or maybe I'm in the weight room and I need some more um, strength or I need to increase my projection so that when I'm doing squats, I have more leverage and I have more force, right, to exert when I'm doing a squat. Um, so they differentiate into osteoblasts. or bone lining cells, okay? So, let's see. Okay, so pretty much this was just telling you that osteogenic cells can either stay osteogenic cells, they be can become osteoblasts, or they can become bone lining cells, right? So because they're stem cells, the beauty of stem cells is that they can create, they can make themselves into anything, right? If they wanna become a brain cell, not that necessarily osteogenic stem cells, right? But stem cells, if you asked it to become a brain cell, it would do that. Right, so because these are stem cells, they have different ways that they can differentiate and do things, right? So they're activated when stimulated. So when we need more cells, we'll make more and they'll tell us which kind we need. And so we'll make them, okay? And then these are active in your periosteum and endosteum, okay? Questions, thoughts, feelings, are we drowning? Are we so confused? How are we doing? Thank you, Lexi. Yes, Christian, Avi. Wait, how do you do that? Go down to the little emojis where you would like mute yourself. And oh, react. Yes. Why can't I make? 
I just want to see all of you at once. Hey, Heather, I don't know if I said hi to you. I think you might have hopped in late, but hello. I've been here this whole time. Nuh-uh. Oh my gosh, I hate myself. Well, it only shows me like so many pictures and I can't like move. Them. I just hate myself. I'm so sorry. Um, rack. Okay, it's fine. We're just going to get just no one, don't listen to my inadequacies. It's fine. Now I'm only looking at Heather. <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Christian, don't clap at me. Don't <laughs> clap at me. Why is this not still not random? Okay, all right, we're going to go on because I am distracted. All right, so then we have osteoblasts, right? These are immature, right? They form bones. We know that. They secrete unmineralized bone, which is called an osteoid. So this is the only new piece of information that you're learning from this little section. You know that osteoblasts are immature. You know they form, they form or build whatever, right? So the only thing you learn new is that they secrete unmineralized bone, right, which is called an osteoid. Okay. Maybe I should just like show you this key as I go. All right. Blocking that one. Okay, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this because then we don't have to like wait for me to write. All right. So. Maybe we like cat. <laughs> Hello, kitty cat. Hello. All right. So your osteoid is made of collagen and calcium binding protein. Okay. So that's just what the osteoid is made of when it's secreted by the osteoblast. Okay, and then collagen, right, which makes up 90% of bone protein. Collagen makes up a lot of, like, all of us, right? Um, we learned that about um, keratinized cells, and we learned that about skin and everything, right? Okay, right, osteoblasts are actively mitotic. What is mitosis, what does that tell us? They're constantly making new bone cells? Yes, for sure. For sure. Can I flip the page or you'll chill? No, you're good. Yes? No? no? I thought I had water. I think I maybe I don't. Oh well. Okay, so then we have osteocytes. Are osteocytes mature or not mature? Mature. Sure. Okay, they're mature. These are, but they no longer divide, right? The osteocyte maintains. <coughs> osteocyte maintains. Okay, so then, right, they maintain the bone matrix and they ask, they act as strain sensors. So they send stress and then they tell the osteoblasts to be like, yo, we need more of this, right? I've, I'm sensing strain or stress. I'm going to make more of this. I'm going to tell you to make more of this as I'm maintaining the matrix and making sure everything is okay, right? They respond to mechanical stimuli such as increased force or, or weightlessness of bone, right? This is why astronauts have to work out a bunch in space because they don't have that force of gravity on them. This, this mechanical stress, this mechanical stimulus is not provoked. And so it's not asking it to rebuild that bone to continue to make it stronger, right? Which is why they have to exercise a lot in space to give that force to try and overcome that weightlessness, right? And it's the opposite on like bodybuilders, people that go to the gym a lot, that increased mechanical stress and that increased force asks it to rebuild all the time. Okay. Okay. So they communicate the information to osteoblasts and osteoclasts so that remodeling, right? We're going to use the word remodeling a lot. It's not my favorite word, but remodeling, which pretty much just means we're recycling, recreating, or we're maintaining the bone, right? So we either communicate to osteoblasts that we need more of something or osteoclasts to get rid of something. Does that make sense? You feel cool about that? Okay, so your bone lining cells are flat cells on the surface. They maintain the matrix with osteocytes, right? So they kind of do the same thing. They're like neighbors, right? They have two surfaces, right? They have a par parosteal cells and endosteo cells. So almost anything in the bone is going to have two sides of it, right, like two sides of the pillow or two sides of the coin, right, it'll have a periosteal and endosteal side to almost everything, okay, and you know what peri means and you know what endo means, right, 
so that so you know where those are in reference. Because I don't think he would ask you periosteal or endosteal out of context. He would tell you about it and then he would probably ask you where it is or what it does, right? Cool. Cool. All right. So osteoclasts, right, which are destructive. Okay. We said that. We said that they break down. They're derived from stem cells that end up becoming macrophages. What do macrophages do? What part of the, what, what, what would you say macrophages are part of in the body? The immune system. Right. So in the immune system, a lot of our job is to Get rid of, excuse me, get rid of it, things that are not supposed to be there. So macrophages eat things that are not supposed to be there. They clear the debris, right? So we're just saying that the osteoclasts come from cells that become macrophages. So that's their job. That's why they're destructive, right? They're really big. They have lots of nuclei, okay? Their function in the breakdown of bone, okay? Right, which is pretty much what you know as class, you know as destructive, right? So they serve to increase the surface area for enzyme degradation. That has a lot to do with, this phrase has a lot to do with the hormones that we'll talk about later, right? Because you constantly break down and build up bone as you need certain hormones. So, um, so these osteoclasts allow us to do a lot of that. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so then we have compact bone. Ooh. Oh, good. That's the one that's caught up in this thing. Then we have compact bone. Okay, which is also called lamellar bone. I know that everything has like another name. All right, so compact bone is also called lamellar bone, and I'll show you a picture about lamellar bone later once we talk about both kinds. It'll make sense. Ding. Okay, lamellar bone. Right, and it consists of an osteon. Okay. Which is also known as a haversion system. I'll show you these pictures in a second. It'll make sense. It's just a name for like a grouping of stuff. Okay. They contain an osteon, canals and canaliculi, and interstitial and circumferential lamella. So this is just stuff that's in compact bone. I'll pull a picture of it up. Okay. I'm gonna move this. Okay. Can you see my screen? Can you see my webpage? No, you can't. No. Oh, uh, how about now? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I want. Okay, so this is your compact bone, right? We're just on the outside. So in here, this little circular piece, right? In here is that medullary cavity and we have all that yellow mirror, right? But outside this, this is our compact bone, okay? So this is like the ending of the bone and that's like the outside. I just want this to be bigger, okay? So then this is, we're talking about, this is literally an osteon, which is also called a reversion system. It's just what it's called, right? So interstitial lamella are literally, so the osteon is the circle. I need to see. The osteon is the circle, right? And then all of those are called, there's a bunch of those, right? There's a bunch of little osteons that make this piece up, okay, right here. Here's one, and here's one, and here's one, and here's one. Anything that looks like the ring of a tree trunk is your osteon, okay? Right, right here, okay? So in between those, these kind of little star-shaped thingies, those are your interstitial lamella. Inter just means between. So it's just the lamella, which is just like pieces of bone that are between each osteon. All right, so if I was to draw, I'll draw it. Hold on, I'll show it to you in a second. I'll show that to you in a second. And then your circumferential lamella encompass the whole thing. So let's see. 
So look at the picture because I'm going to show you my drawing and it's really bad. But so, right, so your circumferential lamella are on the outside. So we're going to go back to the, the iPhone. Okay, so this is my really ugly picture if it decides to, there we go. Okay, so literally these are your osteons, right? Right, they have lots of little rings and tree trunks, okay? This is the, like the outside of the bone, right? Like the very outside. And the circumferential lamella literally encapsulate all of this. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the wrapping, okay? So these are your presents, okay? These are your presents. This right here, this little star shaped piece, right? This inside of here, this is your interstitial lamella. It's just between every osteon, okay? whatever, and then the circumferential lamella is the wrapping of the gift, okay? So your interstitial lamella is like the tissue paper or whatever, you wrap the silly thing in so it doesn't break, right? The osteon is your gift, right? That's what we care about. And then the circumferential lamella is literally the wrapping paper to tie it all together so it looks real pretty. Does that make sense? Yes, cool, cool. They're gonna ask you that. That's not so much for lecture, that's for lab. People get really confused on the bone because it kind of looks all the same. So it's like, which okay. one is the highlighted part? This was the interstitial lamella. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Does this picture help at all? Yeah. You just gotta like, because they don't color code it or anything when they like draw it, and so it, it all looks the same. Whatever. All right, so your compact bone has those things in it, right? Canals and canaliculi. Those are those little hair looking things. It's kind of like how it looks like it's a little ant hole or anything that there's like little um, pathways through it, right? And those end up being like how we get nutrients in and how nerves and blood vessels communicate and everything, right? All right, so compact bone also has that osteon, right? That's the structural unit. That's what we talked about. This is that horrible, ugly circle thing is this osteon. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna read this to y'all and I'll help you figure it out. All right, so your osteon, right, this is the structural unit, just like an amino acid is the structural unit of a protein. This is the structural unit. This is what we care about the most, right? That's why it's the present and it's in the center, right? It's a long cylinder, right? Because if we're looking at a bone, this is 3D. So these are going to go all the way through, okay? They withstand stress and then bone salts are there. They're just kind of like the center of the, this is where we want to be. These are the most important, right? They, they hold your blood vessel and your nerve and your vein, right? That's right. how we really care about them. Someone say something. I interrupt you. Right, that's how we really care about them, okay? All right, we're almost there. We can do this. Okay. So then your canals and canaliculi, right? They run through the core of the osteon, right? The central canal, right? They run through the core of the osteon. That's that middle piece, right? Where the blood vessel and the nerve and everything is, okay? Um, so the perforating canal, right? This is also called Volkmann's canal, right? They're lined with endosteum, right? They're at right angles. It's like, let's see. I'll show you that later. And then the lacuna are where the osteocytes live. Okay, I'm gonna just use like a lab drawing there. It's where the osteocytes live. I'm gonna let you all write that down. I'm gonna go grab my water really quick. I'll be right back. All right, so the canaliculi are these hair-like canals that connect the lacuna to one another, right? So this is why we can break down several different things. Um, 
and what that we allow each osteon to connect and talk to each other. It, it's important that each osteon talks to each other because they're all really important in the long bone. Um, when well, all the bones fit a lot of things in the long bone. Okay, so. So don't let this freak you out really so. Okay, so now we're talking about interstitial and circumferential lamella again. So this is just the definition, right? The interstitial lamella is not part of the osteon. It fills the forming between, right? Which is exactly what we talked about. It's right between the osteons, okay? And then the circumferential lamella is the outside. It's deep to the periosteum, so it's under it, and it's superficial to the endosteum. But what you need to know is that it encapsulates the osteons and the inter and interstitial lamella. Right, so don't let these confuse you from what you know in the picture, right? How are we doing? We okay. Okay. So then, right, so here's a, right, so we have periosteum, right, so we have outside, we have the outside, we have periosteum, we have that circumferential lamella, right, that encapsulates the whole thing. And then on the inside coat of that is the endosteum, right, which will start to create the osteons and the interstitial lamella, right? Does that make sense? Bones is a lot of like layering. Um, and so if you can like go through and layer and tell me what happens in each layer, then you're really, you're cool, okay? All right, so now we're going to talk about what bone's made of, right? We're at that chemical. So all of this up here is microscopic, and then down here is chemical, right? So we said, what's the largest? What's the category of the largest thing? What's it called? The, the largest. Growth? Huh? Say it again. The, like the gross? Yeah, so gross, and then we have... Microscope. Microscopic or microscope. Copy. And No, you're good. I wrote microscope. So I'm not mad and then we have chemical, right? So this is our last bit. We can do it. All right, so bone is made up of organic and inorganic components. Here. Organic and inorganic components, right? It's made of organic because the bone itself is made of organic parts, right? It's made of carbon and hydrogen and everything, right? But the inorganic pieces, which we'll talk about in a minute, is these salts and these minerals that are deposited in the bone. Does anyone hate sitting in their chairs all day? Because I really miss walking around. Like I do, but like also I have to be at my computer all the time. So I'm like standing up on my computer doing things. Like weird. Okay. All right, so these are all the portions of your organic, right? Your osteogenic, your osteoblast, your osteocytes, right? All of these are kinds of cells. So don't look at it as like a list of crap. Look at it as these are all kinds of cells that do things. So they're all portions of our body, right? They're not chemicals, right? They're not minerals, they're not salts. These are all cells, right? So the organic part, right? The natural part or whatever, the organic part that's made of carbons and hydrogens is all cells. Does that make sense? Does it not make sense? Just give me some head nods, even if it's like roundabout. Does it make sense or not? Christian said yes. Lexi's just like laughing at me. Heather says yes. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. I'm just checking, just checking in. All right. All right, so let's see. All right, so your osteoid, right? We said that's the structural unit. So this is one third of your whole bone matrix. All right, we said it's the structural unit because it's that biggest piece. So it's a, th it's a third of your bone matrix and it's secreted by your osteoblasts, right? Which we knew, you didn't have to tell us what it was secreted by, you knew that. Okay. Um, honestly, I don't think y'all need to know this, that it has ground substance, collagen fibers. I don't, I think you need to know that it has high tensile strength and mobility, right? So if a bone, it's kind of gross to think about. If you were to sit here with a femur, you could bend it a little bit, 
which is kind of nasty to think about. You could bend that. <laughs> Mace is like, stop talking. You can bend it a little bit, right? That's because your osteoids and your osteons have a little bit of flexibility and give because of the way they're structured with the osteoid and um, the, the circle, the lamella and everything, right? So they have give to them, right? If they were really rigid and they didn't have any flexibility to them, we would break bones a lot more. Um, and we probably couldn't do yoga. So that's a fun fact. Stacy, go away. All right, so then the inorganic portion of the bone, the inorganic portion of the bone, right, is these hydroxyapatites or whatever, I don't know how to say it. These are your mineral salts, right? They like to throw this word to scare you and you're like, I have no idea what that is. It's a mineral salt, right? That's why it's an organic piece, inorganic piece, because it's a salt, right? These are deposited into the bones, okay? So they make up 65% of the bone by mass. There's a lot of minerals and crystals and salts and things that are really essential to our bones and we store them there, right? Um, they're responsible for the hardness and resistance to compression, right? Where we can jump down off of, um, like when you were young and you jumped off a playground, right? And you land on your feet and your feet kind of tingle, but your bones don't snap in half, right? Because these, these crystals and these salts are responsible for that hardness so that we could jump right down on something and we're not going to just break okay our bones are really hard this is crazy all right so your bone is half as strong as steel in resisting compression so y'all see in those videos where like the little compressy thing and then uh, there's some weird fun thing that it's like this is aesthetic okay and they and then they smash it maybe it's like the crayons and then the crayons go everywhere so when we're that's compression so your bone is half as strong as steel they make buildings out of steel. That is crazy. And then your bone is as strong as steel in resisting tension, right? So if we were to pull on it or, um, yeah, I would say pull. If we were to pull on either ends or try and like break it, like when they do those things where they like hang a phone book and they like try and um, pull a car with like the tensile strength of a phone book, right? When they're trying to like pull it with the chains, your bone is as strong as steel in resisting tension, which is crazy. That's crazy. Y'all are like, whatever, you're weird. That's so cool. It's fine. That's way cool. Okay, so then your bones last like this long after death, right? And it reveals a lot about people. If you've ever watched Bones, which I'm sure is not very true, but if you've ever watched Bones, they tell you, they're like, oh, was your daughter a volleyball player? And she's like, oh, how did you know? And she's like, it's because of all the, blah, 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 you know, all the jazz. So your bones tell a lot about you, especially your bone markings and your changes in bones and your grooves. Um, so they last a long time after death because they're made of inorganic pieces that don't end up decaying for a long time, which is cool, right? We could tell a lot about you by your bones and your x-rays, okay? So I'm gonna play with this. I really appreciate y'all sticking it out. If you do have any suggestions or you hear of anything that you think would be better, cause I could like, I could type it up and then like show you videos as I'm going. It's just hard because I would rather like write it on the board and show it to you. But like that doesn't, it's very challenging. Um, but I appreciate you all sticking around. Go do something else that's not this. I'll post the key online. Um, this YouTube video will be up. So I don't know if they like see your faces or what they do, but I'll like, I don't know. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions or anything. Text back in their mind. Yeah. We'll have one on Thursday and I'll figure it out. Thank you. Bye, Thank you guys. You so much. Bye. Of course. Bye. Thank you.